Hey, what's up, y'all? This is the Mother's House Podcast, and I am Deshaun. What's going on? This is Corey. Peace to everyone. Back at it again. ATL Atlanta. FX. On the official FX. Atlanta Podcast. Episode 6. Is it 6 or 5? This is 6, I believe. Or 5. One of those. Yeah. Anyway, it's the next ep- newest episode on the Atlanta FX review. All right. Um, so uh, it's about it's called the barbershop, right? Is that what it's called? That's what it should be called. I think that's what it's called. That's barbershop. What call it. <laughs> and um, basically, it's just showing the insane reality of Alfred being held hostage by his barber. Yeah. <laughs> that you know, a lot of men, a lot of people can feel, can attest they felt that way about being in the barbershop. Right, right. Um, I think both the barbershops and salons, um, especially when he first walked in <laughs> and um, had the barber, right, the barber was already late. And oh my God, I swear stylists just be late as if it's like... Like it's just normal. <laughs> they just they just come in late, you know what I'm saying? No type of oh my god, I'm late. It's just kinda like, you know, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> don't even say don't even and it's funny that he didn't address him because that's how the boss be that we was dressing like hey my bad man, I've been running late he was away. Oh, don't yeah. <laughs> like my stylist because I have locks for people who don't know but my stylist will walk in and she'll just be like oh go ahead and get on the chair <laughs> but, um, but she'll be late all the time I will say that she'll be late all the time but when she do be late it's just kind of like I'm late man I remember when um, <laughs> and right now I'm bald so I pretty much do my own hair you know I just shave so you shave your own hair yeah, yeah, I shave my own head. Uh, I haven't been to a barber shop in. When I got first got my head for about five years ago. Four years ago. ago. Yeah, about four or five years. Been for about five years since I've been doing my own head. But, um, I'm, I'm going to start going back to the barber shop. I am. Wow. I just, I just, I'm just saying interaction. You know what I'm saying? I missed the conversations. Um, <laughs> See, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, you saying that, so you going to go to the barber and let him shave your head bald? I mean, yeah, they can. That's you know what I'm saying? Not just shave my head, but also trim the beard. You know, they can do a lot of stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they won't just shave my head and also, you know, maintain the facial hair and everything. You should let your hair grow. No, I would look like a heat smizer. Why? Because my hair is receding. I got a hairline receding. Like, my hair, my hairline starts, like, in the middle of my forehead, middle of my head. It's not that bad. Huh? So it is not that bad. Well, yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. But nah, I'm not letting my hair grow again. It's gone. You know, once it's gone, it's gone. I ain't gonna keep playing around with that. But um, yeah, I remember when I was uh, when I used to get my hair cut. I uh, went to this dude named Jay up there in Atlanta, Union City, and uh, shout out to Jay. I remember I went to used to go to Jay. I remember um. I was in college and um, I didn't have a car yet, so my dad dropped me off to the barber shop. And um, <laughs> and you know, usually if Jay's not there, it's another dude. I forget his name, but it's, it's Jay homeboy. He'd be like, "Yo, if I'm not here, he can cut your hair." You know what I'm saying? And it's like he has to get like it's like if your mom is not there, they don't usually want you to go to nobody else but to them. Yeah. You know, um, well, I had to get an appointment with Jay, and he was unfortunately able to get there. So usually, when that happened, he set up where his homeboy would cut his hair, cut my ass. So I'm about to go to his homeboy, and his, he got a phone call from his own from he called his homeboy like, "Yo, tell Corey to hold up." You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get there. I'm just running a little late. That's the vibe. Boom, boom, boom. And because I tell you the lie, I sat there for almost. <laughs> Three to four hours later, on Jay to cut my damn hair. Oh hell no! Nah. It's also he ran the. And I had I ain't had no car. Right, so and you can't do. I ain't that. had a lot of money because I'm a college student. So all the money I had is for the haircut, 
and the little bit I need to get on the bus to head back home. So I'm like, shit, I gotta sit here and wait for this dude. That other uh, nigga would have my hair. Uh, See, I would have got my hair cut by that other nigga. But that thing, the other dude had a whole bunch of other people in front of him. So I would have had to wait regardless. It would have been that long regardless? I don't know, probably that long. Uh, well, I, like, I know I would have had to wait. I would say, hey, other nigga, go ahead and put me in the lineup. <laughs> I don't give a damn if he's walking through the door and I'm already in the chair. He just got to see me get my hair cut by you. Right, right. So, man, I think I was like, what, 22, 21? No, 21. I had a car. I had a car when I was 22. 21. So, yeah, it, that's a while ago. But, um, your barbers should be running late, man. And then there's another thing about barbers. They have hustles outside of the fucking damn barbers. Yeah. Uh, they be hustling their ass. They show this in this episode. So let's get back into the episode. So what happened? So basically, um, things kept coming up throughout the, um, throughout, like, what are you doing? Oh, my bad. I don't move around. Yeah. Things kept like popping up throughout the episode and they ended up like going a bunch of places and he kept having to like delay his haircut. Mm -hmm. So that happened like all throughout the episode. Like they went to like one of his girlfriend's house. They went to steal some lumber from this random place. They went, they saw his son. So the Baba picked up his son. Then he got in a wreck. He got in a wreck with some Asian lady who was screaming like crazy. He was pregnant. Then it was a hair run. So he, he drove off. So yeah, it was like little things just kept happening throughout the show, episode that pushed, uh, Paperboy's haircut back. And this is the thing. But you know, Paperboy ain't patient for shit. You know, this is what tested Paperboy patience like to the utmost. Like, God. I was waiting for him to punch him in the face. <laughs> right, seriously. Now, if I had to go through all that, I would have been done. But like, fuck this. I, I wouldn't even got in the car to go walk. But. <laughs> right, I'd be like, you know what? I'll, I'll just go to somebody else. Thank you. Yeah, uh, even if I had to go to another box, I'd go somewhere else. Fuck this. <laughs> but, um. Uh, I remember, um. With my man, uh, when when when, cause Jay been cutting my hair for a long time, you know, ever since I was in, even when I was in high school. So uh, my dad took us to took me and my little brother to go get our hair cut from Jay, and he took us. Um, he was going to cut our hair, getting ready to cut our hair, and he got a phone call. He had to go pick up his sons, and we just getting out of school. And my dad left us because he ain't up having to go to work, and my sister was gonna come through and pick us up once we finished, once we called him. And um, <laughs> Jay ended up taking us to go pick up his sons. Took all of us to get something to eat. It was like a big detour to go do through all this. Cause we was over here on the south side, ended up going all the way to Decatur to get him Decatur. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is far as fuck. Say it again. I said that's far as fuck. Yeah, I know. We was like, where are we going? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know we were basically held hostage by a barber to get their hair cut by a person who know how to cut our hair you know what I'm saying so um, you know and that also what kind of gave me and Cordy my little brother my younger brother uh, our sense of loyalty to a barber quote unquote you know what I'm saying you know for a black man a barber or a hairstylist or even for a woman you know your hairstylist yeah, uh, the person that does your hair, it's like a personal relationship you have with them. So yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and then you can't let anybody do your hair. Like you can't. That yeah. is just a rule of thumb. I don't care how good somebody is or how I just I don't care. Like even though, of course, I've jumped around and moved around, but um, I know with locks, like. Even if someone else is really good, they still have to get used to the texture of your hair. So they may be doing something too hard or too rough, or they may be like, it may be like some spots in your hair where you can't really pull on, but they may be pulling. So it does take a while, I feel, to find someone to really do your hair. 
Right. And right. then with barbers, it's all about your it's all about your line though. So they yeah. may not know how to do, you know. Cause it's like a barber I learn how to do what they need to do to your head, almost like a terrain. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that's very true. I remember when I made a mistake and let my cousin come out here. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Ronaldo, shout out my cousin Ronaldo. <laughs> you know, you know, sometimes when you you ain't got much money, you just like your little random cousins or family member to cut your hair. Right. Let's get down real quick. Like we here, it's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Ronaldo, you know, you know, sitting in the middle of the kitchen in the chair with a little right. towel over right. here, <laughs> and they cut your hair. I mean, she had to cut my hair before too, but she didn't know how to cut hair. I don't, Ronaldo didn't know how to cut people's hair, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Ronaldo took my hair and he pushed my hairline back so far back. I was so mad at him. And then the bad, sad thing about it, my hairline never grew back. I was Yo, like, that hairline is like <laughs> the hairline is so valuable. Like, nigga, why you even got clippers? Why you even got clippers if you can't really cut hair? Goddamn. Like for, and this is the thing, he cut his own, he know how to dry himself up, but he he shouldn't touch my head. <laughs> So I never went back to cuz no more. I like shake up my hair. Like, you cuss. know what? I'm, I'm gonna just go to the barber next time. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. You know, so my barber, you know, he was like, shit, who cut your hair? I remember I went back to jail. He was like, who cut your hair? I was like, my cousin. Man, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm gonna try to, try to do something with it, but god damn. Right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> It's very vital when it comes to hair. You can't just let anybody touch it. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why, you know, the song, Don't Touch My Hair and all that stuff. It's very, <laughs> they go both ways. Not just for women. It's also for dudes, too. Like, so you, dudes don't like certain people unless you really trust and know that barber. You know, I think Stelon, she was talking about, like, culture, though, when she was talking about her. She's talking about culture. Yeah. But, <laughs> I was about to say, I know you, I know it's not what you got. <laughs> I know it's not what you got from that damn song. <laughs> Right now, now, I'm flipping it, but yeah, you know, I'm bringing it back to black people conversation. This conversation is black folks can have, right. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, you just can't let anybody touch your head when you're getting it done. Um, now the fact that dude took and dude, sorry, I'm like, damn. Bobby is a sorry hustling ass nigga. This nigga hustling everything, buddy, finessing his way through life. I mean, you know, it shit. be like that a lot. Of, hey, I bet you can relate though. Hell yeah. It's not even about yeah. being sorry. It's just about motherfuckers just be trying to survive. <laughs> and you and get over anybody who they can. To survive. Oh, so if I gotta yeah. pick up this side hustle and make a couple of extra hundred bucks a month, you know what? I can use a couple of extra hundred bucks a month. So right, damn yeah. it, I'm gonna do it. Now he ain't had to steal from his girlfriend. I mean, damn. Exactly. I mean, I, I, when he started, did that, I was like, I just you know what I thought. What that when I saw that, I was like. Damn, everybody doing anything for the damn thing. It's like, uh, uh, Howard University students. You know what I'm saying? The right. running aid office. Like, that was just motherfuckers, crazy. Motherfuckers just, you know, trying to just rob. Like, motherfuckers really? gonna be stealing yeah. shit. Yeah. The dude who played him was did good, too. Yeah, he was. He did a great job. Yeah, he was very he was funny, believable because I wanted to fight him by the end of the episode. I did too. I was like, I oh, hope he throw his ass over there, goddamn. Ooh, I want him to get beat up. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for him to get knocked out. Oh man, because he just when he took him to his girlfriend's house, I was like, okay, you can cut my hair right here, but the dice went out. I'm like, this nigga. Man, he cut the little boy hair first. Yeah, I would have been like, oh hell no. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no. Then you got that damn that. Zaxby's out that goddamn house. <laughs> he went to a damn uh, house, an uh, empty house, a damn uh, construction house. Oh, yeah, you know I do a little construction and shit. And then, and then he said something in there uh, that a lot of people will say. You know, he asked me, hey man, you like Zaxby's? Nigga, you know I love Zaxby's. Right. That's that was a Georgia like, moment right there. That was a George Will with the nigga from Um uh what's another scene that's on the air. But you know what like, um when he went to the house to did construction and how he was like stealing like you know how I did construction. I almost could relate to that because how he was stealing um the little birds 
the yeah. the lumber. We were still in the lumber. It's yeah. almost like you got a raw from Peter to pay Paul type you situation. Raw, raw from who? No, you, like you got a raw from Peter to pay Paul. Like you behind on everybody. So it's like I got yeah. I got a raw from this person to pay this person. So it's almost like I gotta steal some lumber. To like kind of make up for like I'm still up from one side hustle to make up for this side hustle to do this side hustle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like a cycle. Yeah, I mean it is a cycle when you get into. That's why you, that man, that man has so many side hustles. Then he even had his son out there hustling. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then, so I think even more than it was about the late barber, it was about the hustler. It's not the hustler mentality. Yeah, more so than that. That's within, you know, a lot of black communities, you know. If you don't know uh, a baby in your community or in your circle of people that you have interacted in your life, then um, you probably ain't live life. <laughs> I think everybody I got a little bit of baby in them. Everybody had a little bit of baby or everybody know a straight up baby. And I know some straight up babies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have you go left or right. Um, who I got a homeboy that does did that that does that when I was in college. Yeah, it was driving all over the place doing random dumbass shit. It was uh, <laughs> waste your time. Your pace is being tested every time, every minute. And I'm like, God, uh, what? Right, that <laughs> was that always show, that friend who you have to have the. You have to have so much patience for because you you already know it's like you already like that close to just going completely off. Oh yeah, I mean, Sean, have you ever had that moment you went off? I've never gone off on a on a friend. I think I did once. I think I did once. Um, I might have did. Like, no, I don't think I ever did. I don't think I ever did. I'm trying to think. Yeah. I probably haven't either. You know, I'm I'm the, I'm very kind of like go with the flow, self style type of dude. Right, me too. Yeah, I might say. Bad. <laughs> but I I would give like little signs that you know like. Oh. I was like, fuck it. I'll just be like, um, I gotta go home. I got somebody. <laughs> Yeah, I have something I have to do. I have to go home. Mm -hmm. I forgot I left my clothes in the washing machine at the laundry mat. You know, right? So, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I remember me and E, me and Eric, my homeboy Eric. Shout out to Eric from New York. Uh, he had me doing some dummy mission. He had me driving to Macon, Georgia to see some. He wanted to go to Macon, Georgia to meet to drop him off with a girl that he was dating. At the time, but before we get there, he needed me to drop him off at because his car broke down. And I had my car, and he needed me to drop him off at the barber shop, take him from the barber shop, and drive him up there. But we get we get to the barber shop. His barber not there. <laughs> Ironic. His barber not there. He couldn't get his hair cut. He, you know, he don't trust nobody else in that the barber shop. Man, you better get this hair cut before I drove the fuck down. <laughs> I was saying the same thing. Nigga, I will cut your hair. Hand me them clippers. <laughs> well, so, you know, like, let's go back to the campus, go to the dude on campus that cut his hair. So we went back to the campus, dude cut his hair. I went back to, you know, the dorm, you know. And this is in Fort Valley. Go. Uh, yeah, this is when we was in Fort Valley. And, uh, and that's another thing. At, at schools, you got at least one person on the campus that know how to cut hair. And he does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I, I only got my hair. Nah, did I get my hair cut? Nah, I ain't never got my hair cut from dude on Fort Valley campus. I met a dude on that work at a barber shop in Fort Valley. So my hair. Um, so, we pick him up. And, um... I think he, he got ready to go. We ended up leaving. He was like, man, I'm hungry. Let me go stop and get something. We started getting him something to eat. And I'm like, okay, how long this shit is going to be dragged out? Right? And mind you, going from Fort Valley to Macon is like a 30 minute drive. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up leaving, going, going from Fort Valley, getting to Macon, finally get to Macon. Can't find a girl no damn well. You know what I'm saying? And then end up having to bring his ass right back. So I just wasted gas and money to take his ass all the way to Fort Valley and doing all that run around. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, your patients get tested even by your damn friends. Right. I mean, now when it comes to just like driving people places, I don't I I suffer that, man, that favor. I 
Yes, <sighs> man. I did that a bunch of times. Like, I, I, do, that, I do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody doing I remember one time. time my stylist I had, <laughs> I had got my hair done I don't know if it happened afterwards I think it did happen afterwards and she was like yeah can you take me take me somewhere some type of government office I said okay sure the government office I think I was getting my hair cut in like I mean hair, get my hair done in like maybe I can't remember whether it was downtown Atlanta or whether it was Clayton County but either way the government office was in Decatur so that happened, and then from Decatur we went to like this um this little hair shop, and then we went and we got something to eat. Somehow I ended up paying. I don't even know how. Was this the same time? It was one time when I took her somewhere, and I don't know if I was like, "Hey, want to get something to eat?" or something, and I ended up paying. Or she said it was so way where I said to myself, I don't think I was supposed to pay. <laughs> Somehow I got tricked into paying. Then I remember one time I had went and helped her with her car. Like I have that stylist out a lot. Man, you do a lot for your deal. <laughs> that, and that was one stylist. That was one person. She just oh, had a lot going on in her life. <laughs> well, yeah. When it comes to like friends eating rides and yeah, um, I guess I'm dependable. Right. Yeah. Me too. Um, shoot. Sure. I remember um, when I was at Fort Valley, my girl, my girlfriend at the time, uh, shout out Nicole. Um, she told me to go get my hair cut. Just when you know, I still had hair and everything. So she told me to go get my hair cut and. She was like, I'm like, yeah, it may be a minute, so you might want well to just drop me off and, you know, head back to campus. I call you when I'm ready to get picked up, or if you're busy, I'll just walk, you know, hike it back to campus. No, no, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait. So I'm like, okay, you can wait in here with us. No, I'm going to go in the car and, you know, wait for you. I'm like, it's going to be a minute. Well, I got to run. She went and do her little runs, and it took her about 30 minutes. I still ain't got my hair cut. It took about an hour for the dude, you know, to get my hair cut. It was a line. <laughs> finally do get to do my hair and she was like she just finally came back in I'm probably getting in the chair I'm just getting in the chair she's like oh Corey how long you gonna be I'm like I don't know probably 30 maybe another 45 minutes it's already been an hour <laughs> she was like I'm like hey I, I told you go back to campus I'll call you when I'm done she's like no nah, I'm just gonna sit here and wait so she sat there waited finally got my hair cut we get ready to get out there get in the car we sit in the car, my freaking barber, uh, uh, had a, the dude that just got done getting his hair cut before, before me, mm-hmm. it was a, uh, a bump. <laughs> and he came out of the window. <laughs> and I knew him, cause I know the dude that I see him all the time, so I told my girl, hey, go ahead and roll down the window. She was like, uh uh-huh. She rolled the window up on the man's head and had his head stuck in that window. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she was out in that window down to my mom came out there like yo he cool he cool he's gonna run out the window and dude tried to ask me for some money I'm like bruh like nah so it's always a, a adventure when you go to the damn barbershop sometimes like it's always something going on I was you know what so I can see why you go back going back to the barbershop because the barbershop always has a lot of character I'll say that it definitely does. It's, it's always an episode, and I'm, the salon is the same way because I go to both far as getting my hair lined up and getting my hair done. Like and it's it's interesting because with with females, you hear them talking their shit, <laughs> so that's right, always yeah, interesting. Yeah. And it's always like a guy somewhere up in there too. Besides me, like whether it's like they have like a barber in there, or it's like a male salad. So that's always interesting. They at the barber shop. The guys always arguing over something too. So. It is always a good dynamic, and it's always a friendly dynamic. Sometimes the the the, the conversation get a little heated, but for the most part, they just be talking shit. Exactly, it just be a whole bunch of folks just talking shit, fussing over right. nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's why. It's like the pop shot is a staple in the black community. It definitely is. Like it definitely is a staple. Of it's just like the church. In the South, it's the church and then the barber shop. You know what I'm saying? Where a lot of black people go and, you know, conversate. It's the same you know way in the North. What you about to say? I said it's the same way in the North. Mm-hmm. They ain't different. And, uh, and, um, and, you know, it, it, that's why I'm going, I'm going back to the barber shop. I'm not trying to go to the barber shop. I'm trying to barber shop in Savannah. 
probably this weekend. I might even go this weekend. Let's just let Louise some network. You might meet some people. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Get to know people, you know, and talk to people, get people to understand, you know, not understand, but have, you know, be able to have that interaction. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember one last story about a barbershop story. I remember uh, I was like eight years old, I was uh, what do they call it, a rain bearer at a wedding, at my cousin's wedding. Mm-hmm. Cousin Andre up in Indianapolis. <laughs> and he took us, took me to go get my hair cut. And. It's, there's a reason why this stand out so to me so bad. It was when he came in, like everybody knew him. Everybody backed him up. You know what I'm saying? They congratulated him on the get, you know, getting married and everything. About to get married, and they were having like real life politi- political hood conversation. <laughs> it was like so cool. It was so intriguing to me when I was eight years old. I was like, "Yo, this is so dope that everybody and everybody talking with each other." It was like. One conversation here, but every, it was a conversation that everybody was involved in. From people just sitting in the chairs to the kids, like everybody was involved in this conversation. I was like, man, this is so freaking dope. I didn't really recognize this when I was back at home um, beforehand. Because when you're a kid, you just want to get your hair cut, go back and play video. Yo, why the barbershop used to take so long when you was a kid, though? <laughs> Oh yeah! It felt like you was at the barbershop all day. Man, it does. It does. I remember with my mom. She, she took it was a barbershop and a hair salon and one. So we'll go and get our hair cut. It was a lady back then. We were real little. A lady would cut our hair, and um, uh, uh, in uh, in the back was the ladies. My mom, we, me, and my little brother got a haircut already. And, you know, mind you, we were probably like six or something like that. And um, we had our little toys and whatnot, but we were running all over the damn house. So, why? That can crazy. I don't know what the hell we were doing. And, um, it's always oh, bad ass to... kids in the salon, too. Huh? It's always bad ass kids in the salon. Exactly. It's always bad ass kids in the salon. Uh, and, um, and my, um, my mom was like getting her hair done. And uh, she did something. What she did? She, I think she threw a shoe at Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> she threw a shoe at Courtney's head. It didn't hit him, but then she threw it. It caught our attention, and we went and shut our ass down. And when we got home, she 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 attempted to whoop both of our ass, but I was so small at the time, I was able to hide inside a uh, a little stool. You know, the little stools. Mm-hmm. Um, I was able to hide it between the stools so when she tried to hit me I did I just act like I was screaming like ah, ah. <laughs> but I ain't get hit so was, you know when, it, when you get your ass whooping me they send you to bed you still crying I was the one that, I was crying I was laughing at my little brother because he was crying because he the one got hit but I didn't yeah, that's <laughs> but um it's just you know it's always a uh, it's an adventure, like I said, man. Go to the barber shop or a hair salon or any of these places. It's like an adventure, you know what I mean. And at the same time, it can sometimes be an inconvenience on your time and, <laughs> and what the fuck you really got planned on doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know, but this shows the genius right. of, of Donald Glover writing, the genius of Stephen Glover writing, and the, the production team at for Atlanta FX, like their storytelling. And their way of being able to tell, like it's a barbershop, able to make that so uh, such a relatable uh, statement, a place. Just off of this uh, one episode is so interesting to me. You know what I mean? Right. And, and like, it's another- I was gonna say, I like how at the end, how he was looking like, damn, like only my baba know how to do my hair. Like, so it's almost like even though you go through all that shit. You still ain't trying to get no different barber, no different stylist. Like, oh, real, because that's the thing when you get a new barber, you gotta teach them how to do your fucking hair. You gotta start all. You know, like start a whole new relationship over. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta start all over. You like I don't feel like this shit. I want you want y'all to come ahead and let me go. Uh, you know, like you can't go to him and just say the usual. Yeah, just say the usual. You know what I'm saying? What I usually get, and just keep it moving. You know. But man, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Um, also within this show, you gotta pick. I picked out that um, 
they have multiple conversations within this the, their episodes. So don't be just like they're talking about barbershop, but there's other nuances that you can pull different conversations from this barbershop episode or from the other episodes or the past episodes with Atlanta. And that's what great storytelling and story writing does. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, 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 I saw something on Twitter The girl was like You know So that's why God be So they ain't really be keen When they saying They going to the barbershop They just be at the barbershop That damn long mm-hmm. Yeah right. and Sometimes it be Them us just talking <laughs> We just be there For an extra amount of time Just talking right. Talking shit yeah. But sometimes You be there Cause you being held out by your ball <laughs> Right it's always that motherfucker in there who talks so much. Yeah. It's either a barber who never cut fucking hair and just talk all the time. Or it's yeah, somebody, somebody that don't do shit and he just talk. Right. Or it's like a regular for whatever reason, every time you go there, they're there and they just be talking all the time. And it be the people who be selling shit. <laughs> See, the barber shop is just a hustle. It's like a little market within itself. <laughs> and that's barber yeah. and beauty salon. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what I think that's what a baby brother's in. Not just like a barber that's hustling and he got multiple jobs, but also the people who come in and try to sell you any fucking thing and that nigga trying to sell everything. Two kids. <laughs> And, uh, and that's the genius of creating the character Bibby. You know what I'm saying? He's like a multiple personality of people within the barbershop. Mm. <laughs> that's funny. Mm. And, uh, uh, but yeah, man. Uh, got any last thoughts on this episode? Uh, nah. Yeah, man. Yo, let us know what y'all think. Tell us y'all some of y'all barbershop stories or horror stories or, or whatever. Or hair salon stories, you know? And, uh, we we'll just chop it up in the comment section. Um, hit that like button, hit that share button. You know, share, go to our Patreon, man. We 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 still short on our Patreon. Y'all you know, hit us up. And um, any last word, cuz? Uh, no. Thank y'all for listening. Peace. I will not raise my daughter differently than my mother raised me. The rearing I got from my mother. Words cannot express. I could live in any time, I could live in any country, I could live on any planet, and I would be fine. What was the key? The key. What did your mother know? <sighs> what truth was coming through your mother that's mm. going to come through you to your daughter? My mother gave us aphorisms to learn as children. And the one that I, there are two that stand out foremost in my mind. One is the inner reality creates the outer form. I learned this when I was in grade school, I was very young. And the other is, the universe bears no ill to me, I bear no ill to